Well, hi there, I'm Noah Bradley and this is Handmade House TV. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about trees, trees with regard to your future home. So stay tuned. Well, okay, today we're gonna to talk about trees. Now, obviously, there's a, there's a whole lot we can talk about trees. We can spend hours talking about trees. I absolutely love trees. I love living trees, the kind you can hug, and I love what can be made of the wood that comes from our trees. I love the animals that nest in them. There's, there's so many wonderful things about trees. Uh, but today we wanna to focus on trees with regard to our home site. And many of us uh, that are interested in building a handmade house are interested in also, uh, if we've got a wooded lot, we want to build right in among those trees. We want those trees right up next to our house. And uh, I can say that throughout my career of building houses for other people, that it's, uh, it's so sometimes it's a real struggle that, that folks want to be able to actually touch a tree from their front porch. Uh, and uh, for the most part, I do my best to discourage trees this close to a particular home. Uh, in that uh, for, for multiple reasons and we'll get into that uh, but uh, first of all I'd like to say that when you when you purchase a piece of property the, one of the first things that you do is you get to know your trees you get to walk around them you get to appreciate them uh, and uh, I particularly like to uh, thin out the bad trees and, and make sure that the good trees have plenty of room to grow and and to uh, properly reach their mature stage to clean it out so I can look through the woods and not have a a dense mess to look through and also I like to, to first thing one of the first things I like to do is to clear my home site and typically I clear my home site a little bit larger than what my clients like it to be uh, and that is that uh, I, I tend to clear over in just barely into any of the tree lines the shade line if you look up into a tree you want to you want to you, you it's okay to enter a little bit into the leaves above it means that you're entering a little bit into the roots below uh, but you don't want to do it any further than you have to you want to keep pulled back from it if you cut into those root lines uh, then you you have a potential of killing your tree or of uh, weakening the roots on that side of the home and actually having the, the tree fall on you eventually and also these roots that are established that are coming toward your foundation they have a good chance of, of actually getting underneath your foundation and lifting it or causing uh, drainage issues around your house um, so I encourage people to prune back uh, as, as much as possible to keep your tree line back away from the house. And this also allows you some room to plant trees close to the home that are of that you desire to have. Everybody has some trees that they, they really love or like to have. Uh, ornamentals, uh, flowering shrubs, uh, fruit trees perhaps. Um, and so by, by turning back a little bit, you're allowed to have a little bit more of what you want closer to the home. Um, as you're well aware, in this particular home that I'm building, I'm doing the, the slow route. I'm building it uh, more or less part-time, uh, part of the way because I'm trying to do it in a pay-as-you-go process. And I'm just not in a hurry for it. I, this is, uh, I, I enjoy the process of building. Uh, it's a great uh, weekend hobby. Uh, it's a great source of exercise. It's a great source of uh, entertainment. It's a, it's a vacation area. Uh, I have a little bit of a lake here, and so I really enjoy it. So uh, the, taking the slow route has a lot of advantages. And one of those advantages is that when you come in and you clear a site out like this, it never fails that one or two trees will die as a result of the exposure of the cut. Uh, if, if indeed, and this gives you a time, the slow build process does, of discovering which of these trees is dead. Um, and that allows you to take the tree down in a cost-effective way uh, versus having to pay an expensive uh, tree expert to come in and climb the tree and take it down one piece at a time. Uh, by, by doing it a slow method here, you're allowed to just drop the tree and, and cut it up. Um, by the way, I can give you a tip. Uh, and that is that uh, that whenever you're having uh, work done on your property, heavy equipment come in, and you're doing such things as excavating your house site or putting the road in. Uh, one mistake you don't want to do, and I've seen people do this before, is they think that come in by clearing the trees out of the way that the road is going to come in. That that's going to make it easier on the excavator to have the trees out of the way, but in fact it makes it a whole lot harder. Uh, that it's very easy for an excavator to push an entire tree over and in the process it pulls the root of the tree up out of the ground. 
uh, if you just have a stump there in place, it's extremely hard for a, for a dozer to come in and push it out of. They've got to excavate, dig it out, or you need to bring in some kind of stump grinder, and then when the, what's remaining of the root decomposes, you end up with a depression in your driveway. So don't pre-cut your trees when it comes time to clear your site or put your driveway in. Um, and another, another thing that it will expose, in addition to a few, a few trees perhaps dying around the perimeter of your site or around your driveway, is, is that, uh, is that uh, you, you weaken a tree by, whenever it's in a forest situation and you remove trees around it, that they're, they're no longer in a grouping. So it's very possible that a tree is left uh, exposed at the edge that's now weakened and that a strong uh, windstorm can perhaps blow that over. And that's it's not something you want to have happen on your home. Um, and so by, by doing a good clearing of your, your, your house site long before you're ready to build to allow some windstorms to come in and to test your trees for their strength uh, uh, can again save you money. Uh, it's a lot easier to clean up a tree that's blown down in a clearing in the woods uh, than it is to remove one off of the top of your future home. Um, and uh, one, one final thing that I'd like to share with you is that um, if you have a specimen tree if you have just a gorgeous tree on your home, it's, it's something really special. It really makes sense to go ahead and to design your home to take advantage of that beautiful tree, to protect that tree, to put a little bit of a fence around it, and to make that the hallmark of your future home. Uh, here in my particular subdivision, there was one lot that had just, just the greatest pairing of two trees that was just perfect for a tree house and I considered buying that lot over my own for the longest time just for that pairing of trees because I thought it would just be the coolest little tree house for my grandchildren to play in I could really see that happening and of course the individual who bought that lot uh, uh, had no no regard whatsoever for trees and, the fr and the, they picked out where they wanted to have their house and and they just came in and just bulldozed the trees and they're just gone and uh, never to be back again and uh, a real it's a real tragedy something was really preciously lost so we want to carefully consider our trees when we're when we're building our house we want to uh, a, a lot of lots don't have lakes or mountain views that the beauty they have or the woods they have around them. So we want to protect and value our trees and we also want to make sure that they're stabilized and they're doing well before we begin the construction of our home. Anyway, thank you guys much for joining me today. I would like to thank five new members of the Handmade House Guild. They are William Reed Jr., David Almaroth, William Graskius. Gracias. John Zajak and Rick Book. Guys, thank you much for joining me. Thank you much for joining me. I'm going to redo that whole thing because that was so bad. William Reed Jr. David Almaroth. William Graskias. Graskias. I am so sorry I popped. <laughs> All right, William Reed Jr., David Almaroth, William Groskius, or Groskius. Either way, William, I apologize, but thank you for joining the Guild. John Zajac and Rick Book. Thank you so much for joining me in the Guild and for all your kind words. And if you're not a member of the Handmade House Guild, consider joining us. Anyway, until next week, thank you for joining me here on Handmade Houses. We'll see you then. Bye now.